Hey, good evening. It's Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous. Thank you for joining me tonight. It's Friday Night Live where I come into your life, your life space for just a few moments, just to give you some encouragement, some insights and some help as you go through the trauma of divorce. I'm grateful you joined me tonight because we're going to talk about something kind of messy, but something very, very important, which is and I neglected to put this up, uh, my ticker uh, that says we're going to talk about uh, shock and grief of divorce. So I've had the privilege of walking alongside a lot of people in the past 17 years and providing many resources to them, support groups, being a divorce coach and also a mediator. And many times I deal with people who are actually in shock. And this comes when maybe you were not expecting a divorce and it all of a sudden gets dumped on you. Uh, it's revealed an affair has taken place or some type of betrayal and it is beyond the ability for your mind to grasp and to comprehend and to accept. And so our body, which is this miraculous machine that God has made, wants to spare us from some of the pain and it will actually shut down parts of our brain to protect us. And that is a, an amazing feature of our brain and our body, but it also doesn't help us function very well because in fact, truthfully, our brain does shut down. Hey, happy Friday, Stephanie. It is Friday indeed. And for those of us who are doing nine to five jobs, we love to hear the happy Friday. I remember my time in uh, the corporate world and I certainly appreciated and love. My favorite saying was, have a great weekend, because I knew it was Friday. So happy Friday to you and to everyone that is listening. So we're talking about um, shock and grief and how the brain actually does shut down as a form of protection, but it doesn't help us to function really well through this stage because there's a lot to comprehend and there's a lot to unpack when it is sprung on you that you are going through a divorce. And some people don't even realize that they are going through shock. They're really just like, oh, how do I compare it? Like zombies maybe just walking around trying to feel their way through life because it is so very difficult. And so how do we help that? How do we help ourselves as we go through shock and grief of divorce or any trauma, quite frankly? How do we do that? First of all, we have to go easy on ourselves. We have to provide ourselves a cushion, a time of grace, a time of slowing down, slowing it down for our body to catch up to what is happening. And most importantly, we need to acknowledge your feelings of what is going on. The more closely and more accurately we can identify what is going on in our mind and heart, the faster we are going to heal. It is so common for people because it is so painful to stuff it, to get angry, to deny it, to refuse to acknowledge it. And they think by doing that, they are giving themselves control. And they are not. They are simply harming themselves further. How important it is as you go through the shock and the grief of divorce that you slow it down, that you actually do deep breathing allowing your body and your mind and your emotions to catch up to what you are going through. So let's talk about grief. Because once the shock subsides and you realize what it is that you're dealing with, your body and your mind and your heart are naturally going to begin to grieve. You probably know the four stages of divorce. You're in denial. You're going to try to bargain. And finally, you're getting into acceptance. And once you are accepting what's going on in your circumstance, you are going to begin to grieve. 
And just like shock, you do need to give yourself permission to grieve. Now, interesting, when I was in camp and holding camp with single moms, we talked about grief and what exactly it is and how few of us really do it well because it's not something that is um, acceptable in our Western society. In other societies, it is more so. But here, we just think we have to be the tough soldier and tolerate it all when really we are just hurting ourselves. We need to, in grief, allow ourselves to feel the feelings and to feel the sadness. Many of us are afraid that we'll get stuck there and we'll never come out. You won't. You won't. And if you find yourself stuck in grief for too long, then you need help. You need outside help to walk you through this process. But allowing yourself to feel it is going to let that grief go through you and go from you. Allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. And I know you've probably heard um, people say journal, you should journal. Some people can't journal. But one way is you might begin to form a list. I just had um, a couple of weeks ago saying, um, just make a list. And we were talking about anger. Just make a list of the things that you are angry about. And wow, did she come up with a list, <clears throat> excuse me, and found that it was very, very helpful for her healing. And true in grief, the more you can write down, you can express. That's why grief and counseling, our group and counseling are so very important because it helps us to identify what's going on in our mind and heart and hear other people in the group setting, hear them explain what you have been feeling. And it is so empowering. So if you are in the stage, and you're probably in the initial, initial stages of divorce, if you're going through shock and grief, I hope that you will listen and take to heart the things that I have mentioned here today. And I also want you, and this is something that, that I tell a lot of people, ask God to hold you. Nothing more, just to hold you. Allow yourself to feel the goodness and the comfort of God who longs to hold you. And I love this verse. In fact, it's in a plaque in my office here. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those whose spirits are crushed. I don't know where you're at tonight and I don't know what you're dealing with. It may be very early in your process or maybe it's been an extended period of time and you are still grieving and you are still in, in some form of shock. Wherever you're at, I want you to know that God longs to hold you, to comfort you and to walk you through this process. He is not a cold and rigid God. He is a loving and warm God and longs to draw near to you as you go through this shock and grief. He will help your brain function better when you allow yourself to be ministered to whether that's reading the Psalms, whether that's going to a counselor, or having a dear friend who's going to listen to you as you speak and articulate what's going on in your heart. So very important. So I don't know where you're at or what stage you're at, or if you've been grieving for a very long time. If so, you need to get some help. And you may say, oh, I tried a counselor and it didn't work. Then try another counselor or try a support group. In my support group, I have had people five years beyond their divorce, still struggling, still struggling and needing to get through this life traumatic event. Wherever you are, seek the help that you need. Go easy on yourself. Slow it down. Acknowledge your true feelings and help yourself heal through this process. Thank you for watching.
This is Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous walking with you every step of the way through the trauma of divorce.